the Bible's an idol. Now, most things I tell you, I got them from heaven. And this one was really heaven sent, what I'm telling you today, the foundation teachings. I prayed under a tree. It's a big old pine tree in Georgia. I prayed under it. It had more cones on it than any tree in the woods. And I prayed under it for three years. And I walked the floor one day and I was asking the Lord. He told me, he said, I want you just to be a Christian. He told me to be just a Christian. Holy Ghost told me that. And I was praying under this tree and I, I was walking the floor and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I just got started, you know, in religion. And I said, what's all this about once saved, always saved? Endure to the end to be saved. Women can preach. Women can't preach. Uh, you worship on Saturday. You worship on Sunday. Once you get saved, you're always saved, or you have to endure to the end to be saved. And I said, music in the church, no music in the church. And where the Bible speaks, we speak all that stuff. And I was saying, Lord, what is the truth about doctrine, sound doctrine? I was praying on that. Now, this is the truth. I wouldn't tell a lie because I got to stand before God. And I know he's there. Bible worshipers don't know he's there. They know about him. They don't know him. I know him. And I know Jesus will get my hide if I tell you a lie. I will not tell you a lie. I was facing west, praying under my tree, north, south, west, and east was behind me. And a light, a light like streaks of lightning, like streaks of lightning, said, jagged, they was jagged like that, hit me in the chest and it said, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. and I shook like I was hit by lightning, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo, like I teach people. Holy Ghost is like electricity. When he goes, you can feel it tingling in your body. He's bearing witness. The Holy Ghost is there. You can feel it's like electricity. And that went over me three or four times. Those jagged streaks of light. And it seemed like my arms would float. I felt like I could jump a tin rail fence. I mean, I was light as a feather. I was running and shouting, and I wanted to tell somebody. I'd take off in my prayer, with a prayer ground. I was down in the woods about a half a mile, I guess, and I'd take off to the house is at night and I wanted to tell somebody and I could write it out on the ground. There, I'd done it on many Indian reservations. I'd write up, I was on a Navajo reservation or the Hopi. I'd write that out to them. They said, don't erase it. Leave it there. They leave it there until the rain moves it or something. But I'll tell you the foundation teaches and I knew it. I don't know how people said, how do you know there was a God? You know it by God being in you. You know it without having the Bible. And he showed me the foundation teachings. The first one, now remember this, if you, if, if you miss some of these and you got a comment in, to Punkin and she'll put it under the comment for you so you'll know it all if you, if you miss it. But the first one is Jesus. He's the chief cornerstone. This is the stone the builders rejected. Now, if you ever seen them build in the old days, they put a big stone up there and this is the corner. The corner lines all the others up. The corner lines everything up. So it lines everything up. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. He is the Christ. He is the anointed one. He's the one that shed his blood. He's the lamb that took away the sins of the world. He's the one that brought the resurrection. And Apostle Paul said, without the resurrection, I'd be of all men most miserable. And Jesus sent back the Holy Ghost. Without him, we would have no life. He's our life. He's our king. I bow before him. Beyond him, I don't have no life. He is my life. I submit myself to Jesus Christ. That's how great he is. He's a chief cornerstone. That's your number one stone in your building. Number two is repent. You change from uh, your ways to God's ways. You quit living after the flesh. You live after the spirit. That's repentance. You change. You want God. That's what you want. The third stone is faith. Faith is the simplest thing in the world. It's God telling you what to do and you do it. They say faith comes by hearing a book. That's a lie from hell. A book ain't the word of God. You let, when Jesus told me to be only a Christian... I become only a Christian. That's faith. Abraham was the father of faith. He didn't have no book. So faith comes by hearing, hearing the voice of God. See, they say the word of God. That's a lie. They interpolated that in the Bible. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of Jesus Christ. He is our faith. He's the author and finisher of our faith. That's your third stone. And then your fourth stone is your funeral day. That's when you're baptized with Jesus. You're buried in baptism with Jesus Christ. You can read it in the 6th chapter of Romans and in the 2nd chapter of Colossians. It tells you being buried with him by baptism. This stupidest thing i ever seen come out of the Catholic Church. They said the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost should be baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What's the difference between the Father and the Holy Ghost? There's no difference in the Father and the Holy Ghost. God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. His spirit is in me. That's what makes me his son. And his spirit, he don't be baptized the Father and the Holy Ghost. They didn't die. 
You're buried with Jesus. He's one died to raise to walk in newness of life. Now, you don't have no Holy Ghost people to baptize you, and I can't get around all over the world. Baptize them, people. But baptize yourself. Tell the Lord, this is the best I can do. I'm going to be buried. This is my funeral day. I'm giving up the life in the flesh. I'm raised to walk in newness of life, and I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. The fifth stone is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it ain't as hard as you think it is. Churches makes it hard. All you do is ask Jesus, say, Lord, please give me the Holy Ghost like Harlan preaches. I want to have the anointing. And you'll feel it like electricity will come in you. He's so plain. He'll just join in with your spirit and become one with your spirit. I've been with him so long, I don't know he's there most time until he, I can feel him tingling wanting me to do something. He can stir things up. That's the Holy Ghost. So ask God for the gift. This is the promise and gift of God does. He didn't promise in us an old book. He poured out the Holy Ghost and they went forth preaching the Holy Ghost and baptizing people in the Holy Ghost. That's your fifth stone. The sixth stone is the, they call it laying on of hands. See your hands? If you didn't have no hands, you couldn't wash your body. You couldn't feed your body. It's the, the members of your body that does the work. Your hands, these little hands. So God uses your body. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You don't let the devil use your body. When a preacher stands up and says, Forsake not to assemble yourselves together. You go to church, you're obeying the devil. You present your body to God. You don't present it to the assemblies of God or to the Baptist or the Pentecostal or to the Catholic. You don't let them control you with their idol. They say, Bring all the tithes in the storehouse. You ain't got no storehouse. It's been torn down. The temple was a storehouse. You don't make them, you don't give them your money because they control you with the, with the book. God controls your house. He controls, you don't go into all the world and preach unless God sends you and you're a chosen one. Many people's called and they go out and they fail. You gotta be chosen or you can go. And so don't be controlled by nobody with books or by, be controlled by the Holy Ghost. Like the Spirit spoke to Philip, said, join yourself to that chariot. Peter, go to Cornelius' house. Paul, go to Macedonia. Ananias, go over and pray for Paul. This is the way he gets his work done, by leading us by the Holy Ghost. Nobody else controls my body but God. That is the sixth stone. Now the seventh stone is the resurrection. And like I was telling you before, the Apostle Paul said, if there's no resurrection, he said, we're among men the most miserable. Because this world ain't no place for Holy Ghost people. We, have, we don't have no life. We have a miserable life. This is very miserable for me. I don't get to fellowship with nobody. Because there ain't nobody, just a few Holy Ghost people scattered. So the resurrection, Jesus bought it will for us with his blood. All these things. Eternal judgment. When you stand before God, that you'll be judged for the deeds done in your body. And woe be unto you, Bible worshiper. You're going to stand there with a book in your hand, and you're going to be in serious trouble. Because he sent the Holy Ghost. And you don't want it. Because you can't do what you want to do. You have to do what the Holy Ghost wants you to do. And when you stand before God, and you didn't obey God through the Holy Ghost, and his seed's done in you, you're in serious trouble. Now, that's the eight stones. Now, this came from heaven. You see, any church that don't have this, run from them. Run from them any they worship the Bible. Anybody don't have this foundation teaching, don't have this teaching, they're not of God. I got this from heaven, and I can write it down. I used to preach revivals on it. Everybody likes the foundation teaching because it's true. It came from God, and it's one of the most important things on earth today, and it came down in my heart from Jesus Christ. He wanted you to know it, and so know the foundation teaching. I started out for Jesus Christ to run Full of joy and love for the good life Heartaches, pain and Satan kept on coming To preach these words of life there is a prize Don't give up, don't give up, keep on trying Don't give up, don't give up, men are dying Don't give up, men are dying.